Hello everyone, Lady Rose from Goddess Garage here with you today. And today I wanted to talk about an herb, the famous and notorious wormwood. So I work a lot with herbs, so I love to learn about their magical uses. Um, I do know some of the health ones, but I'm not here to talk about the health ones. These are just magical uses, curios only kind of thing. So wormwood, also known as the graveyard herb, and also uh, in some old texts called the old woman. Um, it's a sister to the herb mugwort, and I sell the, the these herbs as well. Um, they're conjured by myself, so they're they're used in your spells to help boost your spells for whatever you need that herb for kind of thing. Now I am gonna be switching from these bottles because for shipping reasons, it's just a little harder in the bottles. Um, I'm gonna be switching over to bags and you'll actually probably get a little bit more in the bag, which is a benefit. But also too, I find that um, sometimes this can be hard to get the herb out of the bottle. As cute as it is, it's sometimes a little cumbersome to get it out of the bottle. Much easier to get it out of the bag. And every time you, whenever you buy an herb or something, you get a little information sheet um, on that herb so that you know what it does and you know um, the magical uses of it. So um, the, the way it got its name actually, Wormwood, is because it was often put in mead in the medieval times. And it does um, help with stomach things, but it they actually found it helped to cure intestinal worms because it was not uncommon for people to get worms <laughs> back in those days because the health standards weren't quite up to par. <laughs> and thus the reason it became wormwood. So it's ruled by Mars, the planet Mars, and it's associated with the signs of Aries and Scorpio. Um, Aries because it is a very powerful herb, um, a very protective herb, but also Scorpio because it has a dark side to it as well. So let's get into some of the uses of the wormwood herb and some of the lore and legend of it. So one little story about wormwood is that it is, um, it sprang up and grew on the path that the serpent, you know, the snake took out of the Garden of Eden, the serpent that tempted Adam and Eve. Um, so as he slithered out of the Garden of Eden, wormwood grew up on that path. Um, now, of course, um, wormwood has a notorious history of being one of the main ingredients in absence, which is um, a liquor that has the reputation of being a hallucinogenic and giving you visions and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so it, it, it does have that, but really what it has in it is a chemical compound called Thujone. And there's other plants that also have this in it. And absence, also known as the green fairy, um, is not allowed to be sold with wormwood per se in it in Canada or the States. So it's actually really hard to get true absence. And absence actually has a very bitter taste. So they often recommend like, there's a thing where you can burn like sugar, you toast sugar over the drink and you mix it into the absence. It's supposed to help cut the uh, bitter taste to it because it's not actually that great um, just on its own. Sometimes it's mixed with something of a licorice as well. And it can kind of have a little bit of a licorice taste, especially once the sugar is mixed in. Um, but it really, like I said, it's, it's, it's known to be banned in Canada and the United States. It's not banned per se. It's just the higher content of that food zone is banned in Canada and the United States. You can get absence with food zone in it over in a, Europe, uh, but they have to have a limit of 35 milligrams, I believe it is. Um, so yeah, when we went over to Prague, for instance, yeah, we got a little bit of absence. So I still have some in my liquor cabinet. Um, so, and, and that is made from the oil of the plant. That liquor is made from the oil of the plant, the absence. Um, so you can, I believe, get 
wormwood essential oil, but be very, very, very careful with it because you should not put it on topically. Um, it's It doesn't really have a lot of uses uh, because it is so potent and it can be fatal. So it's not something to mess around with per se. Um, now it's totally different if it's the dried herb, that kind of thing, because the oil's not as much in there, um, has been dissipated. So it used to be, and you can soak it in wine for several days, and it helps to bring those visions. It helps with astral projection. Um, it helps with divination, that sort of thing. There are um, some teas that are made with it because um, it's supposed to help promote lucid dreaming. So there's um, a tea and you, you're supposed to take it before bed. It's sometimes called a flying tea as well because of the visions that it brings and you kind of get this dizzy feeling of being up in the air and that sort of thing. So that's what wormwood does. When you drink it as a tea or you steep it into wine for um, a few days kind of thing. Um, now, if you put it in oil, so you can take wormwood and put it in oil, it's recommended that you use olive oil or avocado oil. Um, what's another one? Grapeseed oil is another good one. Don't use it in things like vegetable oil because vegetable oil is actually considered a dead oil, whereas olive and grapeseed and avocado are considered um, live oils. So they're, um, you know, just a better quality kind of oil. Um, and you can, when you soak it in the oil, you should do it for three full moon cycles and you can put it out under the full moon the same way you would your crystals and include it in your circle if you want to do a circle on the full moon that kind of thing but what you're doing after the three full moons is you're creating a very powerful anointing oil so you can anoint yourself now this is different than the essential oil never put the essential oil directly on yourself but when you just use the dried herbs and leaves and flowers of the wormwood, it's totally fine. You can anoint yourself with it. And it's also, not only it's not the straight herb anymore, it's now in a carrier oil. Um, so you can anoint yourself because it's very, very powerful in protection. Um, you can anoint your home, your office, you can anoint your tools, your altar, that thing, that sort of thing, your car, and I'll explain why you'd want to do it for your car later on. You can use it to dress candles. It's very effective in um, hex, curse, and jinx breaking. So it's a very, very powerful addition to any of those, you know, curse breaking kind of spells. But the added bonus with Wormwood is not only will it break the curse or the hex or the jinx, um, if it's harmful kind of thing, because there are hexes that are good hexes, but there's also hexes that are not so good. Um, but it's very powerful at breaking those things up. And it also takes the harmful ma magic and sends it back to the person who cast out that message. So not only does it break it, but it sends it back to be visited upon the person who sent it to you in the first place. Um, you can put it in your car. I know it shows when I used to sell this. I sold tons of it to mothers with kids in college or university, that sort of thing, because you can sprinkle it in your car, or if you make the oil, you can anoint your car on various places like the steering wheel, the brake pedal, the gas pedal, maybe the door handles, that sort of thing, because it actually helps as a protector against accidents and against driving in um, into dangerous areas. And not just like, you know, dangerous areas as far as like, you know, seedy sides of neighborhoods or anything like that. It will help with that too, but also like just dangerous conditions um, and, and that kind of thing when you're traveling. It also is actually very good at keeping stalkers away. Again, it's a very, very powerful protective herb. So it's very good against stalkers, rapists, and things like that. It will keep them away. Now, not that you're being followed all the time, but should you be in a situation like that, always good to have wormwood on you. And it is a cord breaker. In particular, it's very effective against stalkers because they can have that energy of obsession, always wanting to be around you, you know, always wanting to know about you, that sort of thing. So what it does is it helps to 
almost make you invisible to that person so that they no longer get obsessive about you and it helps to cut the cord that they have created between that person and you kind of thing. Now, the reason it's called the graveyard herb is it helps with communicating and communing with the dead. So when it's burned, and it's usually burned in combination with its sister plant, mugwort, and you can also throw in bay as well in there, but the smoke creates um, a, a gateway um, so that you can communicate um, a doorway or a gateway or whatever so you can communicate with the dead or past loved ones I always recommend when I'm talking about this particular herb to it is a protective herb automatically so that's always good so it will help you to communicate with the dead without fear of bringing something that maybe you don't want across right or uh, angry spirit or an evil entity or whatever but I also recommend not only um, using wormwood for this, but creating a circle first before you start burning the wormwood and the mugwort kind of thing, because evil cannot cross a circle. So you're doubly protected that way, and that way you know that when you're, you're communicating with the dead, you're communicating with souls that want to help you, that have no malicious agenda or harmful intent of any kind so you'll know that you'll be actually really communicating with past loved ones for real and not just is this my father or is this my mother kind of thing is this grandma <laughs> kind of thing right um you can also burn it when someone is passing because it will help that soul to pass over easily it makes the transition more um makes it a little easier it helps them to let go that sort of thing if you are burning it make sure your area that your space that you're burning it in is well ventilated don't breathe it the smoke in necessarily uh fully like unlike saging where you can breathe in the sage smoke don't do that with wormwood because it can be toxic you also, if you're using it in tea or wine or anything like that, you should never use wormwood for longer than two weeks um, because it can build up in your system and become toxic. <coughs> Excuse me. So like I said, you can use it to communicate with the dead. Just do it within a circle. The wormwood itself is protective and it is actually very good at banishing evil spirits. But like I say, it's always better to be safe than sorry. Have a backup, fail safe kind of situation uh, set out. Um, and Wormwood's message, a lot of the message, a lot of these herbs have specific messages. And Wormwood's message is you are limitless and powerful. You must believe, you must believe. Embrace the work that's involved in magical work. Because a lot of people, you know, they fantasize and romance the idea of casting a spell. And spells are actually a lot of work. And spells are often not just done in one session. Um, my, a lot of my spells are a minimum of three sessions and very often nine sessions. Some are as up to 12 or 13 sessions, but nine is kind of one of my go-to ones. Um, it's a very powerful addition to any exorcism or binding spells as well. As I mentioned earlier, um, it's very good at uh, banishing evil spirits. And in combination, I have it as part of my house cleansing exorcism kit that I have with me when I go to do uh, cleansing of spaces or banishing of spirits that are interfering with someone. Um, so it is a, a, a spirit banisher and in combination with mandrake root, it's a very powerful combination and often mugwort is thrown in there as well. So that's a little bit about um, wormwood. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it informative. You can always check my Etsy shop, Goddess Garage Canada. I'll put the link below if you want to purchase any herbs or any of my magical mixtures. So as my voice is disappearing, I will sign off for now. Take care. Thank you for watching. Oh, and please subscribe. Ring the bell if you can. Um, and if you're so inclined, please share with your friends. Thank you so much. Bye.